Another story that, that we're hearing about in just the last uh, hour or so, the chief of staff of the Yemeni president was reportedly kidnapped by gunmen. Uh, tell us more about this, what we've learned in the last hour. I mean, just think about what you said, Victor, it gives you a real insight into how destabilized this country is, how much of a failing state Yemen is. The chief of staff of the Yemeni president in the center, Sinti center of where I'm standing here, Sana'a, at about 10 o'clock this morning, was stopped by armed men, taken out of his car and kidnapped. Now, this is all part of a long raging uh, conflict here inside Yemen. And in the last few months, it's come to a head, really. And the two sides, unfortunately, resemble much of the sectarian violence across the Middle East. On one side are the more or less Shia group known as the Houthis. They're a tribe that have swept in to the capital city of Sana'a in the past few months and have checkpoints on many roads here. On the other side are Sunni groups and they include Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Now many are worried that's turning into a sectarian bit of violence here. Today's abduction has been something that the Houthi political group has claimed as theirs. They've said they abducted this chief of staff, or they detained him in their words, because they were concerned that the president would usher in a new constitution which they consider to be not approved by them or illegal. They refer to the presidential administration as corrupt. Now, of course, there have been condemnation of this abduction by the UK and British embassies here who have appealed for the chief of staff's immediate release, but it shows you how al-Qaeda could have got such a strong grip in this country. The chief of staff of the president isn't safe in the capital of the city. Frankly, of course, in the past decade, al-Qaeda have been able to find a vacuum here to slip into and build their bomb-making uh, skills, as it's known. Victor? And Nick, you've uh, clearly explained the destabilization and the, the strength, the stronghold of AQAP there in Yemen. Why is it so difficult to cool this hotbed for terrorists there? Because ostensibly this is a fight over a very limited number of resources. Yemen is a poor country and there's a little, a little infrastructure here really for an institution to rely upon like a government. The economy here is on the verge of collapse. I'm being told that you know there's months, weeks left until the government has trouble paying salaries. That's the major problem. When you have competing groups like this fighting over a limited pot, you have Al-Qaeda in the mix as well, you have very limited options for the West in terms of intervention. They can provide aid here, but it won't change things fast enough at all. That's the real issue here. There's a state which has struggled for a long time to be coherent and provide the services that people need. When they don't get that, they turn to tribes. Then you get factionalism. Now you get the civil conflict you have here. And at that point, people are concerned. There's little you can really do to slow things down. And it appears as though in the last few hours or so, things have escalated significantly. Victor?